Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Just waiting for some people to get here. We're going to do some editing today. Hey, everyone. Um, just getting set up. Just getting everything in order here. So let me see. Let me get some comments up here. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Do a little editing, a little editing today. Um, just uh, trying to see what's going on. All right, I'll get started. I'm just gonna basically, I'm gonna edit some pictures. I'm gonna walk through it, and if anybody wants to dive in with some questions, just just hit me up. So um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some pictures started here. I'm going to go down, select the folder that I have. Um, i got to find it here. Where did I put it? I have a million. There we go. I have a picture of Toronto that I'm going to work on today, um, get started with. I had actually edited one like this before, and I have actually, believe it or not, sold this sold a picture like this edited on my phone i had them printed for the cafe so again don't need fancy cameras you just need to get out shoot and learn the basics so i'm going to uh mess around with this i'm going to start off uh playing with the uh layout i want to get the uh sizing done it's hey paul how you doing this is a landscape, so what I want to do is I want to deal with the the crop first. Before I do anything, I want to deal with the crop. Now, this was taken in a, f a 4 by 3 shape. I'm going to take this uh, over to um, a 16 by 9 for landscape. It looks good on a phone. So let's talk about cropping here. Most people now have phones. If they're looking at a really nice picture, they're going to pull it up and they're going to turn their phone um, horizontally, which is basically a 16 by 9 is pretty much going to fill the whole screen. And that, for landscape like this, is definitely what you would want to do. You'd want to stretch it out across the screen. Um, I could have easily shot this different, but I was a long way away. I liked the framing of the trees on both sides. That was very important for this shot. And you can see the way the shadow, uh, the sun was coming uh, across from on your screen from the left in as the, uh, I guess the sun was going to set over to the, uh, uh, in the picture to the left. So at this time, it must have been the afternoon. We were over at Center Island. Um, so looking at this picture, it was taken with my phone uh, nothing fancy. Uh, it looks kind of flat. Um, yeah, like it. It's neat that the CN Tower's there. There's the reflection in the water, but other than that, there's not a lot of happening with it. So we're gonna see if we can fix it up. So right now, what I've done is I I've gone in and, and worked on the crop here. So and my phone's sitting still. So we're gonna uh, look at this crop here. Um, kind of like it. The is pretty center. It looks. I didn't check to see if it was straight, so I'm going to go to rotate. Um, if you go to rotate in the program, it straightens automatically. So it basically looks at a few things, and yeah, it has. It's done. It's probably just tweaked a little bit. Uh, straightened it by 0.2 degrees. So hey, it did fix it. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess it was off, but it's taken into consideration. I guess. Uh, the horizon, which would be probably the line below the buildings, and maybe it's taken into consideration the CN Tower. So let's go there. That's done. So now, what am I going to do with this? Now, this picture in my phone is overexposed for sure. Um, definitely overexposed. So now I've got to try and actually, you know what, my s it, it, it's you know what, interestingly enough. 
It's showing up on my phone really nice, but on the screen, it's looking overexposed. So hold on one second here. Maybe, maybe my screen's a little bit too bright. Maybe the screen's a bit too bright. Hold on. You know what? I'm going to fix that. That's my mistake. I had this, I had this feed um, too bright. Does that look better now out there? It probably does. Um, all right. That's a lot closer now to my phone picture. So the phone picture is a little bit better than what you're probably seeing on the screen. Um, not 100% sure on that, though. So anyways, let's get going on this. So what do I want to do with this picture? Yeah, that's my, my bad. Uh, uh, technology, trying to figure these things out. You know what? I, we were playing Pictionary yesterday, and that l that line in. So, for you guys that are here for the technology, the, uh, <laughs> um, the line I had in yesterday, I had it plugged in, and this camera, my phone, I was using as a camera, and it's picked it up as yesterday's settings. So, there's a few other things I, and you know what? Probably. Let me have a let me have another look at this here. Um, you know what? I'm gonna put all these levels here. You know what? This is this is uh, my bad. Okay. There's a reset button. Okay. Wow. There we go. We're all back. I could have edited that completely upside down. So again, uh, speaking of editing, if you are editing on your computer, Paul, you may be aware of this, Mark, I'm not sure, but you can calibrate your screen. And I use a spider. I have a spider um, a, a unit that it's like a camera. And what I do is I place that over my screen and it senses the color. So basically, you run some software. It tells you where to place it. It's like a camera. And it goes through the motions of pulling all the different colors up on the screen. And it adjusts. So if you guys are familiar with that, that's, that's uh, again, another thing you got to buy. But you can adjust your screen. I find that over time, screen, and I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why. But after a while, the computer starts to go m colder. And when you do, when I find my screens go colder and when I do the calibration, they tend to warm up. So what happens is over time, if you don't calibrate your screen, you are actually editing a picture that doesn't quite look like that naturally. So what happens is you edit it, then you send it off to a print lab the print lab gets it, and it prints it based on your adjustments. It doesn't print it on based on how you saw it in the screen. So that can be a problem. So you want quality screens when you're editing as well. So, yeah, and brightness. So there is a great example of when you don't have something set right in your calibration, how you can be led astray in your editing. So um, yeah, I was looking at I, I, some some a part of me was saying why is the picture not looking? It still looks better on my phone a little bit, but um, all the settings are there. But that could again could be my calibration. Um, so and I guess it's a feed for my phone. So let's get into this now. So now we got that back. So we learned a little bit of something we didn't plan on learning. So basically, I'm going to go into the, the white balance on this picture. We talked about white balance before. Um, I kind of, uh, yeah, calibration huge. So we can play with this depending on what look you want. Um, I, you can go with the blue. You can go with a greeny look. Um, again, this is what we talked about before. You've got options on how you want this picture to look. You can adapt the picture to create uh, an illusion. Uh, hey, JF. Um, so you can create illusions here, right? Like you can go start doing stuff like that. Like it's more nighttime now. It's more like sunset, and it, and it, and it wasn't taken at sunset. Or we can make it look a little colder than it was and brings out the blues in the building. I think when I originally edited this picture, I went with... Um, I lightened everything and I went green and blue for, for my look in this picture. Um, 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that there. You could easily um, you could easily do black and white. Um, again, black and white on a cityscape always looks nice. Um, you can see now a lot of the see a lot of times black and white is a savior. And if you look back to a lot of old school for to for photos, and they say, "Oh, the black and white looks so good," you know, they still took great pictures. But black and white gets rid of all the bad colors, and you get a lot of bad tones. If you look at old the first uh, color photos that came out, you get a lot of like weird shades and stuff like that. So in this app, you get uh, you get a bunch of options that are going to bring out different things for black and white. And I would be quite happy with a black and white picture, too. Um, this is kind of neat. You can play with different colors. It enhances the blues, so it'll play with the blues. It'll play with the reds. It'll enhance the reds. It'll enhance the oranges in the picture. So basically, when editing black and white pictures, when you get into more of, um, uh, I guess, a more complicated or better program, when you go to black and whites, you have the option to start playing with the shades of the color. So, for example, let's go back to the greens, for example. Let's go back to the greens. Now, we know those trees. Um, so, you can see what you can do. You can you We're playing with the green shades now in the picture, which is kind of cool, too. So, again, sky's the limit, um, what you want to do with this picture. Um, you could you could you could even do something with that right like that i mean you can even go into even something like that and then if we play with the green again and then we bring the greens up so bring the greens down you get something completely different so my advice to you guys is just experiment as much as possible with everything there is really no right there obviously is a wrong way at one point i mean if you obviously go too dark but again, you've you've got to decide what you want your picture to to look like. So let's get back out of there. So uh, the HDR is something I always mess with when I get a picture like this. I mean, it's kind of fun. Um, this is the HDR setting right now, um, and that's kind of fun. It's really bringing out those greens. Um, we can saturate a little bit. So again, we've done, we, we really brought the picture to life right like that. So that now looks more exciting. It's a bit overblown right now. Um, but again, it shows you what you can do with HDR in this picture, because I find even still by experimenting and messing around with these things, you can, um, you can definitely, uh, find neat things. So let's go back to, um, Let's go back to the colors. So let's go down to shadows because see these trees here? We can bring those trees out a bit. That's what we want to do. And I'm, I'm going to crank the shadows all the way up in this case. Gonna, I want all those shadows. So you can see what we've done. We go back to the original already. Now we've got the trees. Because when I was standing there on that shoreline at Center Island, I could see that. That's what I could see. I didn't see this. They weren't dark like that. I mean, I could see the trees. Remember, when you take a photograph, it bases itself on the light, and it can only really do a two-dimensional picture, which means that if it's exposing for the skyline in the background, it means it's going to have to darken out all those trees in order to get that sky skyline in, um, in the right exposure. If you wanted to get that green like you see it there in shot, you would have to blow out the background and be really white. You can't have both. There is one option you can. If you, I know you can do it with a phone. Um, I'm using Snapseed, Carol. It's a free app on my phone. I'm using my phone right now. Um, I'm using my phone. Uh, you can see it here. This is it. I'm using my phone. It's connected to the screen. So it's Snapseed. So it's called Snapseed. It's Google free app. But you can get it on uh, your iPhone or your, um, or your uh, I guess, your Samsung or whatever. So, yes, you can do one type of photography that would allow you to get this exposure in. And what you would do is you would do bracketing. 
And bracketing is when your camera has a setting. You can get it on your phone, but like if you have a DSLR, some of the uh, upper graded, upper end uh, DSLRs have a setting on it called bracketing. And what it does is you set your camera on a tripod, and basically what's going to happen is you're going to take a series of pictures, one at overexposed, one at the right exposure, and one, let's say, at underexposed. And what it does is it gives you three pictures. Then you take those pictures and then you bring them into something like Lightroom or Photoshop and you basically blend them together. And when you do that, what happens is it takes the all the right exposures of... So it will take the... In this case, you would have the blown out... The blown out picture would have the trees correct but the underexposed would have the background correct and it would blend them together and it would give you this and that's when you get into something like an HDR image which was really cool because you're seeing all the ranges of all the right exposure so um, we're doing that here but we're going to do it by bringing out the the colors and whatnot so let's let's go with this here hopefully um, we can go back into there and we'll go back into there so hopefully you're following along on that. Little tidbits. Um, again, this is a real basic kind of tutorial just to cover stuff. I want to bring the colors up a little bit, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to bring the greens up a little bit. So I'm going to go to the ambience and we'll see see how the... Wow, the ambience is really sweet there. It's bringing out the trees, the reflection in the water, a bit of the green. So... I'm just going to put my finger on it. You can see where we started, where we're at. We definitely added a lot of color to this. So I'm um, going to go back into there. We're going to look down here. Highlights. I might pull the highlights. See what see what happens with the highlights here? There's the white. It Highlights are adjusting the lights. So if we crank them up, you can see how the sky gets blown out. If I pull them all the way down, you can see that it looks like a nice cloudy sky. So this is where we were, but look what happens when I bring it back. Yes, dehaze. This I don't think this has a dehaze on it. Let me let me go check that, but I don't think so. But it may have something similar. But we're kind of doing that here, so I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing there. So I'm going to keep that there. Let's go and see Paul if we have something for dehaze, and I don't think on here we do. They don't have a haze option in, um, no. So they don't, Lightroom does. Lightroom, you can, and that's a, it's a really neat program, the dehazing, especially for that. Or it's great for concert photography, too, because the lights in a concert photography, um, in concert photography, sometimes the, s the shots get so washed out from the lights, you can pull that dehazing right out. Um, or hazing right out by dehazing it. So let's go back here. What are we gonna we're gonna look at? We're gonna go. We were just looking, yeah. So we're gonna go back into there. So I kind of like what's happening here. Now, when I look at this picture, something bugs me. And it's that there's a cloud in here that bugs me. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna go okay here with that. There's a cloud right in the middle that's throwing my eye off. So I'm just basically gonna use the healing tool as we talked about the healing tool before. I'm just gonna go in. I'm just going to get rid of that bit of cloud there. It just looks like a smudge. It looks like there was something on my screen, and there's one there too. So I'm just going to go back down. Now that's a lot better. So I, you know, did I cheat there? No. I got rid of an ugly cloud. So we fixed that up. So um, this is coming along pretty good. Um, I'm going to vignette it a little bit right now because I want I want to do something with the s maybe the sky and around the bottom but i'm gonna add a little bit so that's that's what we started with guys there's our picture that's shot out of the camera and that's what i'm ending up with so you can see so it's, it's definitely a lot better you definitely you post that on facebook or instagram you're definitely going to get a lot more attention with that picture now, definitely not the greatest. It's it's nice composition, but again, it's taken from a long way away. It was a hazy day, and it was on an iPhone, so you're only you're only li you're limited to what you can do with it. So, um, 
what would I do at this point carrying on? Let's go back in and see. Um, do I want to sharpen this picture? Now, if we zoom in on this picture, you can see already it's a bit grainy because it's so far away. So do I, do I really want to mess with the... Because when you sharpen something, you enhance everything. And right now, there's what we call grain in the photograph. Now, obviously, this is an iPhone, and I'm zooming in, so obviously you're not going to have a pretty sharp picture. Do I want to mess with this? You know, you look at the trees. They're a little bit... They're, they're not 100%. They're a little bit blown out. You know, it's it's not perfectly 100%. Again, iPhones are fantastic, but when you're shooting something that, I don't know, what's that, a kilometer away? I, I, <laughs> it's, it's a long way away. So uh, do I want to sharpen it? You can sharpen it. Noise reduction. Uh, what we have for noise reduction in this program um, is, uh, let's get, over. first of all, we'll go there. Noise reduction the only options we have for noise reduction would be really unsharpening it and maybe pulling down, pulling back the clarity a little bit, clarity a little bit, which is that. So if we zoom in here, you can see what happens when we pull that down. So this is the difference. This is the structure. So you can see the difference here when we zoom in, what we can do with this picture. So let's zoom out now. And let's let's try that again. So that's pretty cool from a distance. You can see how it's become really uh, three dimensional. So structure is like your clarity. And if you were doing an HDR, you would want to crank up your structure as well. So we're gonna, we, you know what? I'm gonna take a risk on this, and I'm gonna do that. So that's what we're at. So let's look at the original, and now let's look at what we've got here. So you can see now it's come to life. Okay, it's getting a little bit kind of futuristic. So I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the sharpening tool which where we were and I'm going to You can we could pull back the sharpening a little bit. And I'm going to pull back I'm going to I'm going to pull back Oh, I can't I can't I can only sharpen it. I can't pull the sharpening back. Gotcha. Okay. So even I'm learning something today. So I'm going to keep it like that right now. It, it, it looks very, very dynamic for sure. And uh, what else we got to play with? So you can see what we're doing. You can go into the, dr the dramatics. You can go into vintage, all these other kind of filters. I'm staying away from them in this case. Um, I am going to go back in and just have another look at these options. I'm going to look at what contrast will do. Add a little bit of color because when you, I find color with HDR works really well. Now let's go back here. You could bring up the highlights a little bit. The highlights does help a little bit get rid of a little bit of the grain in the whites. Um, shadows, we can play with them a little bit more. So you know what? When you tell someone you took that picture compared to that picture, to me, it works. It's a little bit grainy, but it's kind of cool. So I'm, I'm going to save this picture like that. I kind of like it. Now, one thing before we go, we could go back to curves because it was highlighted. We could go into the colors of curves. Now, we talked about curves before. Curves basically gives you a little bit more room to adjust. So let's let's see what we've got going on here with the curves. We can play with the greens of the whole picture. And I don't know if I want to. So I'm going to go out of there. And then we could see, we could go back into there and we could play with the, we could play with the blues. Because the picture's got a lot of blue in it. And you could see what will happen if we play with the blues. We can pull the blues back and add a little bit more green to the whole shot. Now, you know how when I, I'm holding my finger down on the image when I do that. When I have one of the operations open, 
and I press my finger on the screen, it shows me the picture before these, this application is applied. If I close out of this application and go back to the main screen and I put my finger on the picture, it'll show me what the picture looked like before I started. So right now, if, if you put your pic, I put my finger on it, that's before I put the green touch in. That's with the green. And I'm kind of liking the green touch a little bit. So I'm going to keep the green touch. Now I'm going to put my finger on the screen. And it goes back to the original shot. So you can see what we've done. Now I've, I've done nothing fancy here. I've just messed around with this. I've just edited this to my liking, not to a rule book, except for maybe the straightening out the horizon and that but basically go by feel have some fun with this i mean we're posting pictures constantly on social media start playing with your picture and like i said before every picture i post on the facebook i edit in here if it's just a shot i don't nothing gets through my phone until social media unless it's some Something I just, it's more of you got to see this than you do need to see it. You know, if it's an image of something funny or a street sign, I might just post it. But most times I take a picture. Like this picture here, for example, I took at Center Island. Now, from here, I would have got on a, um, the bow to go across. I would have probably edited this on the way across. <laughs> That's how the attention deficit deficit disorder works so I would have probably edited it then but I would have taken the couple of minutes I, it wouldn't have taken me obviously we've spent maybe 20 minutes on this but I definitely would have messed with this picture somehow I would have done something and usually it is to bring out the shadows and um, uh -oh. getting comments oh I should put it on it oh well uh, let me just switch it to airplay so there there you go so um, let me do that. There we go. Go back here, and there we are. So there we go. That's uh, that's that one. So now we're going to export it. I'm just going to basically, I always just save it, and see it says saves with changes you can undo. So basically when I save this, as I'm going to do, it's going to ask me to modify the original picture, but if I open this picture back up in this program, it'll allow me to have the option to take it back. So I will have all my information there. So let's say, for example, I look at this now and there's something I want to change. If I go up to the little arrow in the top, the little arrow in the top with the little squares, I touch that on, and then I have a choice here. I can go to View Edits. And basically, here it's going to show all the things that I've done to this picture on the side. And uh, you could go in and say, you know what, I made a mistake. I didn't want to take that cloud out or I didn't want to, you know, change, change a certain color. You don't have to start again. You can just go in here and pick the one you want, like rotate crop. Like let's say, for example, that's not the crop I, I want. I want to go back. If you click on crop, it goes right back to where you were when you were doing the crop. And you click it on and you have a choice. I can delete the crop edit or I can edit the crop edit. And it gives me an option here. Do I want to go in here and mess around with this? Now, interestingly enough, I did think about coming in here, and I could actually drop it down a little bit so that the horizon is in the center of my frame, and now the space between the top of the CN Tower and the bottom of the CN Tower in the water in the reflection is the same distance away from the bottom of the picture. And I'm going to click that on. I did notice that, and I was just avoiding it. Then once I've done that, I go back up to the top and I click the top one on. It'll take me back to the top. Then I go to the top left and I hit the arrow and it takes me back. So I've actually gone in there now and changed the crop. And um, I like it better.
when you look at it, you don't see a bit more space above the CN Tower as you do below the CN Tower. So again, little things like that are what you want to be looking for. Um, now, this picture, if you blew this picture up and had it printed, it will look very grainy. You guys are probably on your phone right now. And the thing is, a lot of pictures that we edit and put up on Instagram only get viewed in like a two-inch space. So you don't have to be fancy. So, you know, if you're just putting it up on Instagram, it doesn't really matter how big the image is or a lot of, you can just sometimes over enhance stuff and still get away with it. If you wanted to print this picture, you would definitely want to spend a hell of a lot more time on it. But again, we're just putting this up on social media. and I've had people see these pictures and say, oh, can I buy it off you? And I'm like, well, I don't even think I can print it because it's edited on such a small pic small space and it, it's not high high quality anymore but it looks good it looks great but you can't make a 10 by 20 or whatever out of this so now i've already exported this picture but we went and changed it so i'm going to go back in and export again and i'm just going to save it again and what it's going to do is it's going to save the same picture override it modify yes and that is done so We've got time. If you guys got any questions, shout them out. But this is, uh, I'm going to go open, going to go back down. Just to show you something I did earlier. Talk about pic pictures. This is a picture. This is a picture. This was my lunch, and I put this up on my Health First Living page. This is the picture I took, and this is what I did with it. Before it went up on the page, I, I edited it. And since I edited it, we can view the edit. And you can see, let's go back to the original picture here. Let's go back to the original. Uh, how do we do this? There we go. Let's go back to the original here. That's my photograph of my lunch. And I said, well, I'm going to put it up on the fir Health First Living page. And I did. And that's the picture that I came up with. So if we hold that down, there you go. Just added a little bit of brightness to it little bit of light because when I took it there wasn't a lot of light over top I've enhanced it and I've added a little bit of color I put some words in and I made it like a little poster you know like mark for example when you're doing stuff for your band if you if you're the one putting stuff up on the um, the uh, website throw your name on the bottom like this post dates like this, little tags like this. It's so easy to throw stuff up there. Um, these are obviously not like official logos, but they're just wording and it works. I kind of hijacked this little Health First Living as my logo for this page. I just put that little thing there every time. So keeping it simple, the little frame around it's kind of neat. Uh, works good with food. Would work good with a music picture. Um, anytime you're posting anything if 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 someone's like mark if you got a picture of you playing guitar do a little bit of work on it throw throw uh throw some words in there throw a frame around it i'm sure you can get other even if you use another program for putting words and stuff like that i'm sure there's like a, a poster app which would be really cool you could use after but the initial picture you can go in here and edit it so you can use it now um the phone is charged good so let's get back out of there. Let's open a picture. Um, I had this. I had some pictures in. Actually, where's the where's where's more of those? We'll do one more before we uh, call her a day here. Let's go back here. Um, so we did that one of the. This one is a kind of a cool picture. Here's uh, a Rottweiler I photographed. Again, just I saw the dog laying on the deck. I said, I got to take this picture. What are we going to do with this? Okay, first thing we do is we're going to go in and crop it for sure. So we'll go up to crop. I want a square crop here for sure. Actually, you might even want, ooh, you know what? We can pull right in tight to this guy. You know what? We might even be able to do... Uh, Okay, canvas, canvas. I guess it said canvas, but it canvas. So, okay, there's a great idea there. So um, I'll have to check that out because I wouldn't mind uh, experimenting with uh, 
55 by 4. Okay, so right away, just cropping this picture. Ah, Adobe Spark, there you go. Is that a mobile app, Paul? So this 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 right here whether whether or not you do any more editing to this just changing the crop on this picture has done amazing things. So to get started from here, one thing I'll tell you about doing dog photography cuz boy I know because I got lots. Let's go look at their eyes. Dogs always have droopy eyes. We always wipe our eyes. Dogs don't. So every time I edit a dog's photograph, and I did, I've done a ton last year because I was doing, actually right up until I think Valentine's Day this year, I was doing uh, dog photos. Um, you want to go in, and it is, okay, good. It is a uh, mobile app. I'll check these out too. Thanks. So what we got to do is we got to get rid of this little white line here. Go in there and just touch that up, even that little spot in there. Let's get to me that's, and then we're going to go to the other eye by moving that red square, or red square, geez, some sort of dyslexia with colors. That blue square, go in there, and again, just touching the screen, which I'm doing right now, and I would, I would love to have this on my computer, but it's a phone app. Um you can see what we're what we've done here so right off the bat now there's some other stuff see these little see these little uh, flakes on the dog I'm just taking them out with the brush just a small little brush I'm just touching it up we're gonna we're gonna finish off with this picture and do it we just we just go in and, and touch up the face now the this na dog's name's Watson this is Waddy so you look at his eyes now look at the difference oh hold on I got it wait so let's save that. Now let's look at this picture now. Oh, I'm still not out of there. Hold on. There we go. Oh, what happened? Oh, there we are. So let's look at the difference. Oh, can we zoom in on the difference? Huh, funny. Though I've made those. Oh, I see, yeah. So you can s definitely see if I zoom in, can't really see. Oh, it's got a big uh, essay there. Um, all right, so let's go in and see what we can do with the colors now. So uh, do we need to adjust the white balance? I don't know. It looks pretty good. I kind of like that warmth feel. Uh, the browns. You, when you get browns in your picture like this, it's definitely more of a warm look. He's laying on a cedar-colored deck. Um, so let's see what we've got here. Let's go to the ambience first. So we can, again, we can do that or we can do that. Where do you go with this picture? I'm usually on the side of that. Now you can see down the bottom. I don't even know if I want to get into the histogram. The histogram down on the bottom left side will show you on the, l there's a little chart like a wave. It's kind of like a curve, I guess, but there's a wave on the bottom. And basically what's happening is it's showing you your darks are going to be on the left side and your lights are going to be on the right side. And basically you're looking at balance here. So if I was to, let's say, go to brightness, you could see as I move it brighter, you can see the peak and everything in that wave coming closer to the zero on the right. And that, without even looking at the picture, you can... If I looked at your histogram of your picture but didn't see your picture, I could tell you by looking at that chart that your picture is blown out, which means that it's too bright. If we go back the other way, I can tell if it's too dark because all everything is showing dark in the... How could I say this? The majority of the picture 
is showing dark by the by the graph or the grid. Um, I can actually touch that and it works in a four bar system, which also does the same idea. But when you turn that on, you get a better idea. So let's bring the brightness back. I'm going to I'm going to leave it. This this picture was exposed pretty good. And if you look at that graph now, you can see that it kind of drops before the zero on both sides. There is a little spike near the zero. Um, on the right hand side, it's because of the top uh, left corner, there's that white sky. That sky is blown out. I'm okay with that. So let's save that. Now, what else can we do? Let's go back into that chart and see what we can do with this guy. We're going to add a bit of contrast to him. Because I like the contrast. I love the color of the... I love the color. And I do... A lot of times, I can... I'll be honest with you. I'm doing this. I'm not. E I'm. I just started touching stuff without even thinking about it, without it even explaining, because I'm so used to. Again, let's uh, get out of. Oh, can we go back? Uh, I don't know what happened there. So let's go. Let's see where we're at now. So there's the beginning. That's where we're at so far. So one thing I would love to get rid of in this picture is the blue. See the blue that's on the side there? I think it was a barbecue cover or something or a towel. It just, I don't like it. When I look at the picture, I see that. So I don't know if I can actually go in here. I could do it with a brush. Uh, I'm going to try it with a brush and take the saturation out. So, again, we're experimenting now. So I'm going to go to the brush. I'm going to go to saturation, and I'm going to take it down to 10, minus 10. And I'm going to see if I can get rid of that blue. Okay. So what I did there was I went into the brush, I pulled up the brush, and I adjusted the, I adjusted the saturation to minus 10 by brushing over that blue box. I got rid of all the blue in it. Now it doesn't take it down to black, which is fine because it almost looks the same color as the green siding on the house, which I like the green. It blends in with the black and the the um, the black and the um, orange color. There's one other thing you could do in this picture. I could go to the crop again. And if I go to the crop, I could go to free. And I could just bring the right side over a little bit and get rid of that black line. And I maybe could have, yeah. Got rid of that black line there. It was driving me nuts. But then again, maybe it added a frame. I don't know. It's, again, your call. I'm just going to go in right now to the eyes. I'm going to do something with the eyes. So I'm going to I'm gonna select the brush, and I'm going to add a little bit of exposure. Uh, maybe quite a bit of exposure. Let me see what happens here. Oh, that's too much. Let's go back here. Go back in, exposure, the brush. Want to lighten the eyes a little bit. Make them a little glassy, and we're going to add a little bit of, maybe we'll bring out the color a little bit in them. We'll go brush again. We'll go, we're going to go, we'll go a little bit of color. All right, that dog's looking pretty sweet. And again, you can go in if you want to enhance this dog anymore. You can add a little bit of, a bit more there, a little bit of color. We can do, um, let's go to sharpen because this is a pretty good image. So we can add a little bit of structure, which will bring out dogs. You can get away with structure because of the fur lines. 
asking, remember when you're editing a female portrait of a person, of a lady, you want to be careful with structure because you'll bring out the details. That's something that is usually avoided. You can see most women when they're editing photographs of themselves, they're using a filter to soften everything. But here uh, with men and things with lots of lines on it, that you can enhance it and get away with it. We've done that here. And then we're going to sharpen everything a little bit too. So definitely, I mean, it was a great picture to start with in a way, in a sense, but now we just brought them out. We just made them pop out. We're going to put a little vignette around them because we need a little bit of, we need a little bit of framing. Got to put a little bit of framing. And all of a sudden, here's a picture I took with my phone. The dog was this this how this picture happened was I can I was working up north on a cottage. The dog was laying there. I walked over. The dog didn't move. I took the photograph of my phone. I didn't have much time to compose the shot. I just took it. I knew that I was far enough back and I could do something with it. And that I did something like that with it before. I've done something like that again. The color of his paws popping out, the lines, the, the fur above his nails is so cool. We can see that now. Could we see that before? Let's see if we could see that before. We could, but it doesn't really pop out. We're seeing the deck. Now we're not looking at the deck anymore. We're looking right in the dog's eyes. And that's what you want with a picture, especially when you're taking a picture of a dog, an animal, any anything that's got a head on it, you want to be looking, making contact. That dog's looking right at you now. And uh, that pretty much sums that, that picture up. I mean, there's nothing more you could do. If you wanted to put a little frame around it, you could. Very little frame would probably trim it off nice. We could put a frame. Let's try a frame, see what happens. Oh, that's text, sorry. Let's go to frames. Um, do we want a frame? I don't know. Are we doing too much now? This little frame thing is great. By basically, you select a frame and you just slide your finger back and you can make the frame any size you want. Frames are kind of cool, especially with the fact that the, the frame is helping me because on the side there, there was a little bit of a off, off shape line. So I'm going to, you know what, we'll keep, we'll keep the frame there for this one. So this is it, like... Man, th this was taken on a phone with a free app. Everybody has a cell phone. Everyone's got a pretty, most people have got a decent phone. And you could do this on any, any iPhone, any phone, and a free app, and you can get a picture like this. And basically, it's messing with it. It's letting your, you know, your vision go. And you got a wicked picture of a pup that, you know, imagine, uh, imagine again, let's go back. Oh, it, I took a picture of a dog. Hey, what do you think? Yeah, that's pretty neat. Oh, what a cute dog. Hey, I took a picture of a dog. What do you think? Wow, man, are you a professional photographer? <laughs> that's the thing. This is, this is the deal here, guys. Take the time and mess. I say go out every day and do a, give yourself a photo challenge. Go out every day and try to, try to create a really, really cool picture. And uh, this picture, I just had it on my phone. I didn't go searching for any certain picture. I just uh, grabbed it. But again, uh, and then you send it to a friend of yours that, you know, you take a picture of their dog and you send it to them and they're they're going crazy over it. It's a, it's a great thing to do. So uh, great a hobby you can do. So when someone says that's an awesome picture, what kind of camera do you use? That's the kind of question you get all the time. And basically it has nothing to do with the type of camera in my opinion, it's just taking the extra time to do a little bit of work on on the shot. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And there you go. A nice picture of Wadi there. Beautiful colors. So there you have it, guys. Uh, it is 10 to 5. I'm going to call it a day here. But... Um, Thanks for tuning in. Hope it was helpful to you. I see there's uh, I got a I got something to read there, so I'm gonna uh, give that a read. But yeah, so uh, if you got any pictures, edit them up, send them to me, throw them in this link. I'd love to see what you guys are doing. I had one the other day. There was a uh, I I edited a picture of a little girl the other day, 
Um, the lady that sent it to me, uh, Crystal, she sent me a picture the other day, which was her first edit, and it was really good. She did a really nice job editing a picture of one of her children. Uh, very impressive, and uh, all because she spent a bit of time with the app. So, Mark, give the app a try. Try it out. Shoot me some pictures, and uh, let's see what happens. Anyways, I'm going to head out of here, guys. Thank you so much, and uh, happy editing.